today let's design and construct a narrow band pass filter for a given sender frequency using a single op pump with a multiple feedback and also we can study the frequency response of the circuit a narrow band pass filter possesses a narrow band of frequency over which output is steady for such circuits quality factor q is generally greater than 10 The circuit is unique for two reasons. One, it has two feedback paths, hence it has got the name multiple feedback filter. It will be clear when we go to the circuit diagram. Then second point is the op amp is used in the inverting mode. This is the narrow band pass filter circuit. The op amp that we use here is IC. Seven four one, and from the figure you can find the multiple feedback paths. One is through R three or R F, and second one through C two. Both are fed back to the inverting terminal two. From the inverting terminal two, there is another connection to. C one, which forms a junction with the resistances R one and R two, and also with the capacitor C two. Other end of R one is connected to the frequency source function generator, and the other terminal from function generator is grounded. And other end of R two is grounded, and from non-inverting terminal pin of IC. is grounded through resistance r3 and also we know uh, the pin 4 and 7 are used to provide minus v e e and plus v c c and output is taken across uh, pin 6 and ground across load resistance r l load resistance that we use here is a 10 k o When we design the circuit, C1 is made equal to C2. Hence, don't confuse with the positions of C1 and C2. It doesn't make any difference. Generally, narrow band pass filter is designed for specific values of sender frequency F, C, and Q. While we design the circuit, we can determine the values of R1, R2, and R three using these equations, keeping C one equal to C two C equal to C, and also we can choose sender frequency F C and A F. Then R one is equal to Q by two pi F C C A F, where A F is a gain and Q is a quality factor. Then R two is Q by two pi F C C into Q two Q square minus A F, where Uh, while R three is equal to Q by pi F C into C, and uh, F is given by R three by two R one, and here uh, it has I F has to satisfy the condition A F less than two Q square. In the design of the circuit, we choose the following values. That is, C one is equal to C two is equal to point one microfarad. F is taken ten, then F zero or F C. This is both the same. One k hertz and Q taken as twelve. Then substituting these values, we get the value for R one, R two, and R three. R one is obtained as sixty eight point seven three, and the standard uh, uh, resistance uh, resistor for this sixty eight point seven three is sixty eight ohm. And for R one, it is calculated to be one point nine k ohm. The standard resistance is two point two k ohm, which is nearest to it. Then the for R three, the nearest standard value is forty seven, nearest to thirty eight point two k ohm. That we obtain by calculation. Nearest standard resistance is forty seven k ohm. And here also in the design, we take R three equal to R of that is equal to 47 k ohm and rl is 10 k ohm here is the connection on a breadboard we have op amp ic 741 
which is an 8 pin configuration. Starting from pin 1, as you can see, pin 1 is not connected, it is free. Then coming to pin 2, uh, pin 2 is connected to pin 6 through a feedback resistance RF. And also there is another connection from pin 2 that is capacitor C2, one terminal of capacitor C2. And coming to pin 3, it is non-inverting terminal of the IC. It is connected to resistance R3, other end of which is grounded as you can see. And coming to pin 4 as we know, it is used to provide a minus VCC from the battery. So for the supply, I have connected a small connection wire to one hole of the breadboard. From there, we can connect to my minus negative terminal of the battery. Uh, pin 5 is not connected. It is free. Then coming to pin 6, I have mentioned the connection between pin 6 and 2 through uh, feedback resistance. Also, there is uh, there are two more connections from pin 6. Uh, one is one end of the first capacitor C1 and also output is taken across pin 6 and ground. So we have load resistance connected between pin 6 and ground. So this is a load resistance. So we have uh, two connection wires uh, let free to connect to CRO. First one is this, second one from a ground. So one from pin 6 and one from ground. Then coming to 7, uh, we as we know, it is used to provide a plus VCC from battery. So we, I have taken a small connection wire to one point of the um, breadboard. From there, from there, we can connect to positive terminal of a battery. And pin 8 is not connected. Meanwhile, we have a very big junction here which are formed by other end of C2, other end of C1 and one end of R1 and one end of R2. And other end of R1 is connected to input source and input source is connected across one end of R1 and ground. So these are the two terminals used to connect to a frequency source which is a function generator. And other end of R2 is grounded, other end of C1 is connected to pin 6. So, these are the two input connections, these are the two output connections. Connections are new, other way written number power supply, 12 volt power supply, input to function generator, output to number CR in the Nanad Kunu. Plus VCC, 7 in the plus VCC, 4 in the minus VE, ground the number and the eight ground delay. Keep the tender. Up a seven day connection with a separate to the tender, four in a connection separate to the tender, don't an ugly lake or the tender. We then number of function generator in the input. R1 in ground in across site and function generator in the input. The CRO output is 6 in ground in across site and the CRO output. Now, the input frequency point 6 kHz is the corresponding output voltage. Now, the point 6 is the amplitude output amplitude. Now, we have 1 kHz. Now, we have input frequency 1 kHz. We have slowly increase the input frequency. We have to increase the input frequency slowly. 1 kHz initiation slowly varies. Now, we have 1.38 kHz. Now, we have to increase the input frequency. Increase the output. Voltage is the input frequency 0.6 in the input frequency 0.6 in the input frequency 0.6 in the input frequency 4 voltage in the input In the 
tabulation, first of all, write V input. In the present experiment, V input that we have taken is 2 volt. And in the tabular column, first column records frequency. We started from 600 hertz and then uh, increased to 700 and like that. So record in order in the first column. Then take log of frequency, uh, find log of frequency and uh, record the second column. Then third column records output voltage that you measure from CRO. And uh, fourth column records gain uh, using the formula V output by V input. Uh, then last column records gain in dB using the formula 20 log A F. Since we have a wide band of frequency ranging from 600 to 2000, nearly 2000, it is better to plot the uh, gain in dB versus log of graph. This is the shape of a gain in dB versus log of graph. Log of is plotted along x-axis and gain in dB along y-axis. It has a Gaussian distribution as you can see. From the graph, we can find quality factor Q using the formula Fc by Fh minus Fl. Uh, where Fc is the center frequency, Fh and Fl are high and low frequencies obtained from graph. This subtract 3 dB from maximum value of a gain. So this is a, this line represents maximum value of gain and subtract 3 dB and we arrive at this point and draw a line parallel to x-axis which intersects the graph at two points A and B. And again draw lines parallel to y-axis from A and B which cuts x-axis at two points. The A represents uh, the line from a represents uh, f l and uh, that from b represents f h high frequency and uh, low frequency and high frequency respectively middle of these two points represent f c and along of these points f l f h and f c on the x axis uh, gives uh, the value of frequencies representing low frequency, high frequency and a center frequency. Substituting these, we get a quality factor. So, you don't have to copy down these values. Just uh, take your own readings and uh, uh, do tabulations and uh, do your own calculations to find the quality factor. Now, we have the value for Q from the graph. And from the expression for R1, substituting this Q, we get the practical value of AF uh, as uh, using the formula Q by 2 pi F C R1. Finally, the result is a narrow band pass filter is constructed at frequency response curve has been studied. And record, also record theoretical and practical values of FC, Q factor and AF. So, don't get disappointed over the difference between the theoretical and the practical values. Good luck. Thank you.